Assalamu alaikum. So today we are going to talk about admission and MPhil and PhD in mathematics at Abdul Salam School of Mathematics, uh, which is affiliated with Government College University Lahore. Every year they offer scholarships for the students to get admission and MPhil or PhD. program at Abdul Salam School of Mathematics one of the prestigious school you know for mathematics in Pakistan so every year they you know select almost uh, uh, you know, 20 to 21 students uh, every year uh, for MPhil and PhD programs and uh, for further information you can go to their website i am here on their website Uh, and uh, secondly, they give you fully funded scholarship, and every month they give you a stipend of, uh, you know, maybe, you know, and from sixteen to twenty thousand rupees, PKM. So, so this is a great opportunity for uh, the students who are willing to join mathematical institutes for PhD or MPhil in Pakistan, especially for the. students from pakistan so in this year so what happens they conduct a test a great test every year so in this year they also took a great test in 2021 sept it was on 4 september 2021 so today we are going to see what was the sample paper and their test so here it is so it was a sms test 2021 for mphil and maths scholarship of course it was a scholarship so yes so in the first step they give you some mcqs so uh, they contain multiple multiple choice questions when i say mcqs i mean to say multiple choice questions where you have to answer multiple choice questions from english usually they take from direct indirect speech as grammatical things etc and then there comes a major part that is subjective part or descriptive part where you have to write the answers of the question so this year Here was the question. The question number one was uh, check whether the following limit exists or not. It was the first question. So what you have to do for this case, you know, for example, uh, whenever there is a question of calculating a limit for more than two variables, then usually there are high chances that limit will not exist because if it exists, then you have to prove. by epsilon delta definition or whatever so non existence is easier so what you have to do you have to take two paths and check that your limit is different along those two paths let's say first you pick y to be 0 uh, so y to be 0 mean you are talking about x axis and then take x goes to 0 so this is this was x axis and then you take along y axis so different techniques that you learn in calculus 2 so this was part a it was from calculus 2 uh, two variable calculus and question b uh, so question one's part b was also from calculus 2 so it was given that you have been given a function and you have to calculate its extrema what you have to do is you have to take its partial derivative with respect to x and then y and then you have to equate it to zero from there you will take critical points and then those critical points will either be you know uh, maximum or minimum depending again uh, upon the second partial de derivative test that usually comes from hessian determinant for that you have to see second partial test okay so part c of the question one is basically nothing but uh, integration and uh, this integration can be solved using polar coordinates because it involves x square plus y square plus 1 uh, which is which is sort of a circle so i believe there was a minus here if not again you have to take the polar coordinates and you have to uh, solve this particular similarly there was a question number 2 where it was says that give an example of a function Uh, which is bounded but not riemann integral so yeah what are the functions which are bounded but not riemann integral of course the functions uh, uh, which are bounded but not riemann integrals one interesting example can be found from 
uh, real analysis book where it says f of x to be, uh, let's say one if x is an rational, uh, less than zero if x is not an rational. So, so if I if I'm forgetting something, then go and check that. And then there was B part of question two where it was said that show that every metric space is housed of T two exam. It's not not difficult, you know. So what is a T two exam? Uh, let's say. So check that and, and solve that right now. I'm not having it in my head. And question three, it was said that show that every compact space is complete, but converse is not true. So what happens in compactness? So every compact metric space is, you know, sequentially compact. So take a Kashi sequence because it is compact. So there exists a you know, convergence subsequence. And from there, you have to show that this Kashi is converted and from that you will get. And why the converse is not true. So think of R and think of some metric and see R is complete, but R is not complete. So you have to figure out, I'm not going into all of the details. And uh, there was a question B, show that or check whether the function is satisfying Cauchy Riemann equations or not. So here are Cauchy Riemann equations. I have already kept here. I had taken these are pair of Cauchy Riemann equations, uh, u with respect to x and y, e respect to y. These are going to be equal and u with respect to y. Of course, derivative of minus v is with respect to x. So if these two pair of equations are satisfied, then satisfied, then we say that function satisfies Cauchy Riemann equation. And then you have to integrate this complex integral. So for this, I hope the residual theorem will be helpful and check that. And question number four, give an example of group of order 12, which is non-abelian. Uh, also show that it is non-abelian. In my opinion, uh, D6, you know, are A4 are going to be the non-abelian groups. Check that for example. And there was a question point matrix of linear transformation R2 to R2 that is rotating a vector R at an angle of pi by four. So when we see with, res with respect to following bases, so bases are also given. Okay, so for these bases, let's say, uh, for these bases that were given, uh, one, one, and one minus one, for these bases, um, we don't know, but for standard bases, we know that the transformation matrix is, uh, rotation matrix is, uh, you know, uh, X is equal to cos theta minus iota sine theta, cos theta I minus sine theta uh, J, and then Y is cos theta I plus sine theta J. So you have a matrix with cos theta, or, and minus sine theta in the first row and cos theta and sine theta in the second row. From the, there you put pi by four. So this will be the matrix of linear transformation with respect to standard basis four. So now you have to see how to convert a given linear transformation, uh, transformations matrix, matrix if it is given in one basis, how to calculate its matrix in the other transformation. This is also not as tough you have to see from linear algebra. Uh, linear algebra, the topic would be change of basis, uh, matrices um, of linear transformation. So see from. So wish you very good luck uh, for next year. Thank you.